verses 1 through 8. We will have responsive reading. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men are attractive and they took their wives any they chose. The Nephilim were on the earth those days, and also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. These were the mighty men who were of old the men of renown. And the Lord regretted that he had made men on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Amen. Let us bless each other, be at peace. You are the missionaries to save the world. Let us receive the inheritance of the desolate heritages. Let us again greet each other. To those who are next to you, let us await the days of the Lord. Really, with that heart, let's stand before God. Really, uh, examine yourself if your hearts are not so dim to really see God. And really think about if you are not losing hold of what is important because of the things of the world. What we need today is Christ. Really, with the heart of awaiting Christ, I bless you in the name of the Lord that may you have victory in today's worship. It was about a month and a half ago. This one person in Japan came to our worship. And as he attended the worship, and as he was leaving, he said this. Oh, how is it that possible that our pastor is able to know my life so well? And as this person was giving worship, this person said that it, their lives were organized inside of the gospel. If, it, if that person is the person of God, that's rightful. And as through the pulpit, we are continuously receiving the word. We are talking about what is the fundamental thing. We must have the organization of the word. And what the word speaks about, it is the gospel. And the gospel must be organized inside of our lives. And prayer must be organized. Evangelism must be organized. And last week, we must have the organization of today where there's the grace of God that helps us in the time of need. Why are we talking about the fundamentals? Because all of the answer, the start of all of the answer comes from the fundamentals. So whoever stands in the pulpit, we're talking about the fundamentals. If the fundamentals take place, then everything else will follow inside of our lives. Then what is the fundamentals? Our fundamental is Genesis 3, where we are self-centered. And Genesis 6, which is we are centered around the, a world, and we are living 
a success center in Genesis 11. This is the fundamental that is inside of mankind. And through the pulpit, we are continuously listening to the word of Genesis 3, 6, and 11. And many people say this. Isn't that a story of the past? Are, there is no problems like that right now. Then is that truly so? Is it truly just the old story? Or is this the story that's just inside of the field of the unbelievers? And if you come to a misunderstanding, we keep on saying that we must save those who are fallen into Genesis 3, 6, and 11. If you think that way, then you are thinking wrong. Because that is the problem that is inside of the church. That is the problem that is inside of us. And that is our problem. And take a look at today's passage. Where did the history, the works of Nephilim start? In verse 2 it tells us, it says the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were attractive. And even in verse 4 it tells us, it says the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they were bore, they bore children to them. Who raised up the Tower of Babel. So the descendants of Noah who held on to the covenant, his descendants raised up the, the Tower of Babel. So what is the problem of this fundamental problem? Is it Satan or is it myself? You must know that I am the problem. We keep on saying because, oh, Satan tempted me. But in Genesis 3, it tells us the core of Genesis 3 isn't Satan, it is me. God has given us free will. And God has given us free will so that we can really enjoy the blessings that God gives, gives to us. But we have lost hold of that free will. And that is why as we live our lives and walk the walk of faith, I am the most problem. Even in serving the church, it's the same. We're not trying to say that let us save those the unbelievers that are fallen into Genesis 3, 6, and 11. We must win over this problem inside of the church. Right now, this is plowing inside of the church. And now this is filled up. This has filled up the church. And Paul confessed. He says, I die every day. He says, I die every day. It's not just a day or two that he walked his walk of faith, but he didn't say, oh, oh I die every once a month or I die once a year. He said, he realized that he must die every day. Why is that? Is today's title. It is because the source of the spiritual problem is inside me. That is why first we must take a look at this. You must know that there is an adversary who harasses me several times throughout the day, and that is myself. Satan tempted Eve, and inside of their conversation, it says this. God told Eve, Adam and Eve that if you take this fruit, you will surely die. But Eve says that we might die. 
It means that she wanted to eat that fruit. And Satan, knowing that so well, tempted Eve. And he said, you will not die, and you will become like God. The problem of Genesis 3 occurred because of myself. And because the same for Genesis 6, the problems of the Nephilim, because we're not able to break free from myself, and we keep on wanting something, me wanting something, it is that is why this kind of problems occur. And even after receiving salvation, they're not able to be set free from that. That's because we follow after my center, my thoughts, and my methods. And those who have received salvation, they're not living by the blessing of God. And though they have received salvation, but most of the people do not live by the blessing that God has given them. It means that I am alive. In today's passage, it tells us is that the sons of God saw the daughters of men were attractive. The non-believers with no covenant, them being attacked is rightful. But the people who know the covenant of God, but because we keep on thinking to ourselves and want, want to live my me centered, that is why we are always attacked. Really, don't lie to yourself and re truly stand before God. We keep on making excuses of God and we keep on talking about the Bible. We keep on saying, oh, God's like this, and we say the gospel's like this. We keep on saying it that way, but realistically, that center, it is me. And even same for serving the church. And though we have made this solution or, or this conclusion, the master of the church is God and it is the Lord. And God will make the church. If you see in Acts 16, Paul prepares to go to an evangelism journey to Asia. But as he was preparing, God has not allowed him. So he didn't he, he didn't persistently uh, think about only his decisions but he was thinking about what God wanted and that must become our standard. So we, what it says in Philippians 1, 9 through 10, we must, in prayer, uh, make discernments. Although we have made a decision, we must be able to make discernments of what is truly right. And that's what the church is. If this doesn't take place, then the church becomes people-centered. Really, take a look at the problems that are arising inside of the church. We keep on saying, oh, the problems of Satan, but no, it is truly the problems of myself. So after the core worship yesterday, the Daegu Presbytery came up together and prayed the Mitzvah prayer. And the content was, the theme was, uh, it was a time of 
Samuel when all the people came together and they repented before God. So Samuel told the Israelites because the Israelites were one because of one person's mistake because they are uh, because we are a community, because of that one person's fault, we all must come together and repent of our sins. And we must discard all of, all of the idols that is not God, and we must repent. And what kind of works arose at that time? A miracle arose. The Philistines could not attack. God raised up miracle and the Philistines, Philistines were not able to attack. So it's not the problems of others, it is my problem. Satan already he is bound by the name of Jesus Christ. What he can only do is just tempt us and just uh, lures us. And you guys all know the book of the Pilgrim's Progress. So it, the Pilgrim's Progress is the book where the people are going towards God. Inside of all of their process, and you're able to see that Satan kept, keeps on deceiving them. But can Satan attack? Satan is just growling at them. He can't actually attack. You guys are the people who have received salvation. You guys cannot perish even though you want to. That is because God has made you His temple. And whenever we pray, He works. And He has raised us up in the works, the movement of world evangelization. If just only when we are able to let down our, my thoughts and my decisions, then we can have victory. It's because my standards and my decisions are still alive. That is why we keep on falling down. We keep on making excuses. When we make excuses, we talk about the gospel. And we say that we give glory to God, but actually, realistically, we keep on looking to ourselves. So when we start off the day, we must not just start off that day. I am the problem. That is why God wants us to live by the power of Christ every day. So, to live by the power of Christ, what we must hold on to, like our life, it is prayer. It's not some kind of method or it's not some kind of decision that we have to make. If we do not live by the power of Christ, we are always deceived by Satan. I really bless you in the name of the Lord. May you truly, in prayer, live by the power of Christ. Secondly, we must not lose hold of the part where God is at work. Moses, when he was beginning, he said, I cannot do this, Lord. God promised Moses that God will set the Israelites free through Moses. But what did Moses say? Who am I to stand before the Pharaoh? 
and say, I cannot stand people, I, I cannot do this, I cannot even speak well. But at that time, God gives him the word. And if you see in Exodus 4.24, you can see that God tried to kill Moses as a, at a lodging place on the way to the Lord, met him, and sought to put him to death. Because God said this, Moses came to his senses, and he was able to learn the hearts of God, and he was able to find his identity. And you're able to see wherever he went, all the doors open. He stood before the Red Sea. He didn't say that, oh, let's st stir up our strength and let's fight. He didn't say, oh, we can do this. He didn't speak about any method. He says, today, see the work. And uh, see the work that God will do. And this is God's method. Oh, we must live, live our lives diligently. Yes, that's also correct. But we must not lose hold of the word of God. We must always check if you are losing hold. If you're not losing hold of the word of God. So in one sense, right now, all, all of our believers, they're taken aback and they are faced with problems. They're troubled right now. But in any circumstances, when we are taken aback and when we are going in rush, we make mistakes. When we are taken aback and when we are rushed, then we keep on thinking, thinking with our own thoughts, and we are easily losing hold of the plans of God. That is why we must always check what the plans of God is. So for only evangelism and only missions, we are led this far, and God has led us this, led us this far. I started my walk of faith in, starting from middle school and up to this far, and now I am standing here as the head pastor before all of you. And I saw the times when our church was once in the unhealthy mysticism. And I was, at, I was there when the age of evangelism a boom arised. And inside of all of that process, you guys all know that we are falsely accused as a heretic. And at that time, you guys were all gathered here and making the confession that God has led us this far. And that is why you are able to see God truly has led us this far. And we were able to see the works of God. And now God has given us the covenant of saving the 237 nations and the 5,000 tribes and the prosperity. Then why at this time God has given us this problem? And we are come to a complete shock and we are broken down. But I can say that this is the works of God. It's because we must not live the same way. Because we have to save the 237 nations and the 5,000 tribes and the prosperities. That is why God has shown, revealed these problems. We are gathered here for world evangelization. 
무엇이라고 말씀하시는가 질문해야 합니다. Then we must ask here the question what God wants us to see from here. 우리가 복음으로 돌아가요. So before saying this is right or that's right, we must go back to the gospel and we must be able to come to the resolution inside of the gospel. Even if it takes uh, for me to hit myself to go into the gospel, if not, then only fury, anger, and a disappointment will be left behind. God has led us this far and showed us the evidence. And no one uh, rejected that fact. As time goes on, the churches will face more problems. If the anti-discrimination law gets passed, then the churches will fall into more problems. And our next generation are the people who will be in the uh, blind spots. Right now, the mental problems of the teenagers only in Korea alone has multiplied by five. And in Europe, there's 44 times more has increased. This one there's one person that was trying to gather those people who wants to choose if they're a male or female. If they're a boy or a girl, in one month alone, 15,000 people gathered. And right now, that's the field of today. Really, we must look towards faith and make the confession of faith. If God has led us this far, then even now, we must be able to make the confession of faith. Really, give the confession of faith to your children. And you must have the forum where you're able to give your prosperities the answers through the gospel. When the parents are met with the problem and what kind of confession they make will be relayed to your prosperities. And that will be relayed as the inheritance of faith to our prosperities. Really hold on, on to the gospel. We must be able to relay this to our prosperities. Moses walked through the wilderness for 40 years. Because he made the correct start, what he had in his thoughts was God is in front of us, God is with us, and God is behind us. And because he started with that correct thought, he was he moved center around the tabernacle and center around the three feasts. And he moved center around the Ark of the Covenant. What does this mean? God is in front of us, God is upon us, God is behind us, and God is guiding us that way. And that is why he was able to hold on to the covenant and move center around the tabernacle, Ark of the Covenant. And even after doing that, they lost hold of this again. And even if after they built the temple, they lost hold of this covenant again. And they were held captives by Babylon. And what kind of works arose at that time? The Babylonians came to attack. But 
But there is a in Jerusalem temple. There is a place, the holy place, where not all the people could enter. But the Babylonians came and attacked and took all of the holy vase inside of the holy temple, and they drank wines from that. And these kind of works arose. And the king was dragged, and his eyes gouged out, and was put to death. So you must know these kind of works. You must be able to see the problems that is arising inside of me right now. Even though we are held as captives, they could not uh, let go of themselves. And that's the work that is spoken to us. And right now, it is telling us that the source of all spiritual problems, which is myself, we are not able to let that some let that go. I will make, come to the end of my words. And if you see in First Timothy one fifteen, he says, "I am the sinner, and whom I am the foremost." And in Galatians 2.20, he says, I die, uh, I am crucified on the cross. Paul makes this confession. I have been crucified with Christ. Me dying is not truly dying. That is the way for me to live. Uh, Paul knew who the adversary was. The source of spiritual problem is myself. Really, become the people who can win over myself. This is the fight that we must always fight. And myself must become only Christ, only kingdom of God, and only Holy Spirit. Even Paul made this confession. He says, in Romans 7, 24, it says, Wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Wretched man that I am. And right after that, he held on to the covenant. He says he gave thanks to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So winning myself, that's not possible with our strength. When we are filled with only Christ, only kingdom of God, and only Holy Spirit, that is the way for us to win over myself. I'll repeat after me. The source of all spiritual problem is me. I bless you in the name of the Lord. May you become the children of God who will have victory.
날마다 그리스도 능력 안에서 하루를 출발하도록 하옵소서 오늘 하나님이 역사하시는 부분을 놓치지 않게 하옵소서 기도 제목들 마음에 담으시고 함께 찬양하겠습니다 오.